know when you will need them again. Uh, I've been blessed by many men of God, some of them who have even long gone to be with the Lord, but because they recorded something, I'm able to receive an impartation from them through listening to them. Just the other week, I received an impartation from T.L. Osborne, you know, and uh, my ministry will never be the same. My healing ministry will never be the same because of the impartation I received from him. Just listening, uh, just listening. Okay, so I want to talk to you about the victory in the secret place. For you to have victory in the physical, you first register it in the secret place. In the secret place. So 2 Kings 13, 17 says, Now uh, Elisha, uh, from verse 14, Now Elisha previously had become ill of the illness of which he died. And Joash, king of Israel, came down to him and wept over him and said, O oh my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen of it. Mm. I hope I am audible enough, children of God. Just let me know in case you're not here. Am I audible enough? Okay. O oh my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen of it. And Elisha said to him, Take bow and arrows. And he took bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. Note that and underline it in your Bible. And uh, Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. And he said, Open the window to the east. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot and he said, the Lord's arrow of victory. The arrow of victory over Syria. For you shall smite the Syrians in Afik till you have destroyed them. Then he said, take the arrows. And he took them. And he said, the king of Israel, strike the ground. And he struck three times, and stopped. And the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck down Syria until you have destroyed it. But now you shall strike down Syria only three times. You see, children of God, I want to talk to you about victory in the secret place. And I pray that you get this. It's very important, you know, King Joash in our passage is a picture of the present day believer. Okay? And Elisha represent, is a representation of God. Who in the Old Testament, the man of God was the representative of God in the place. Okay? So the conversation that we see here between Joash and with Elisha is a picture of time spent with God in the secret place. Okay? The interaction between Elisha and the king is a picture of the authority that God gives to us in the secret place. Are we together? When the prophet put his hands on Elisha's hands, it is a picture of God putting his hands on ours. It's a picture of God working with us. It's a picture of God working through us. Are you getting it, child of God? Okay. We also see in this portion of scripture that how much we are going to utilize our authority. How much of our authority we use in the secret place will determine how much victory we shall register in the physical place. Are we together? When the, when the dying prophet, and you remember, this prophet was dying. And I talked about this when we were launching the Upper Room Church in Barara. I had a, like two, three minutes talking to them about the importance of honoring the anointing, the importance of honoring the servant of God. You know, <laughs> Elisha is sick, but he's anointed. Okay. If you, uh, if you don't learn to honor the anointing and you 
instead focus so much on the sickness of the man of God, you will miss it. You might miss the victory that God has for you because you are so preoccupied with the sickness of the man of God. Elisha was sick but anointed. Then I shared from another place. These are things we have been learning from Doug Howard Mills, the thing about honor. Uh, Elisha even died, but he was dead but anointed. There's a time they were burying a certain man and they were burying a man in a hurry. When they threw him in a tomb, they mistakenly threw him in Elisha's tomb. When his body touched the bones of Elisha, he was raised to life. Elisha was dead but anointed. You must learn to honor the anointing that God has put over you. You must learn to honor the anointing on your pastor, on your man of God and everything. You must learn to this portion of scripture which says we have this treasure in divine jars of clay. You must learn to understand that there is treasure in divine jars of clay. If you preoccupy yourself with the sickness and the deadness and everything on the man of God, you'll miss it. You'll miss it. You'll miss it. But uh, that, was, that was just beside the point. That was not the, my point today. Okay? Now, as the dying prophet, and the Bible is clear that he was sick from the disease that he died. You know, as the dying prophet laid his hands on the weeping king, it signified a transfer of authority. Okay? God was transferring his authority from the chariot and horsemen of Israel to King Josh, Joash. And as the king shot in the air, he shot with a new authority. That's why Elisha said, the Lord's arrow of victory. You must be careful with the instructions that you receive from your man of God. With the instructions that you receive from the one that God has put before you, okay? The, 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 the degree to which you follow those instructions is the degree to which you'll have victory in the physical realm. Uh, are you getting these children of God? It, it's very important. It's an important aspect uh, of prayer. Eh? You hear those scriptures that no longer it's not by power, it's not by might, but by my spirit, says God. You know that scripture, Zechariah 4, 6, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You must understand that God's spirit works through people. So it, the verse could be read that not by power, not by my might, but by what my spirit has communicated to you through somebody. Mm. What my spirit has communicated to you in your Bible study. What my spirit has communicated to you as you listen to the sermon. What my spirit has communicated to you as you study that book. Not by power, not by might. But, so for me, when I'm reading a Christian book, and we are now reading, uh, in the library we are reading Joyce Meyer's book, Battlefield of the Mind, with the pastors, we are reading uh, Church Planting. I'm reading another book by Moses Mukiza, and you know some other things that I I be reading. You know some of them I don't give you so that you're not overwhelmed. But for me, when I'm reading, I'm literally saying, Holy Spirit, what are you doing in me? Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? Holy Spirit, what are you ministering to me? Because I know that when I catch it in the secret place, I will manifest it in the physical place. When I ah, when I shoot in the secret place, the victory shall be seen in the physical place. Do you get this? Is this making sense? Ah, uh, is this making sense? You remember Moses? When Moses was in the, uh, before he met God, it was his rod, it was his stick. When he threw it to the ground, remember, they are in the secret place having a conversation in that place where God says, remove your sandals. For where you're standing is holy place. When God told Moses, throw your stick down and pick it up. 
when he picked it up, it was no longer the rod of Moses. It was now the rod of God. They were doing transactions in the secret place. Hmm. That in the secret in the secret place, it can cease to be the mouth of Mary and now becomes the mouth of God. It can cease to be the mouth of Huntington and now becomes the mouth of God. Remember what God told Moses when Moses was saying, I stammer, I watch shall I stay? God says, I shall be with your mouth. Oh my God. Oh my God. For God to tell you in the secret place that I shall be with your mouth, my God. I think every preacher needs this. Every pastor needs this. Everybody who speaks to people. I was praying this prayer the other day in the secret place. I was saying, Lord, be with my mouth. You know, praying such specific prayers in the secret place. Be with my mouth. Then when you are in the meeting at the workplace, at Debosa, when you're in the meeting, then when because God is with your mouth, you will say something and everybody will say, uh, yeah, I think what Liz has said, uh, let us go with what Liz has said. Because they, 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 for them, they see Liz. But for you, you know that in the secret place, your mouth became God's mouth. Ah, are you getting this? Are you getting this? It was no longer his arrow, but it was the Lord's arrow. After a burning bush experience, Moses' rod was no longer his, but the Lord's. Now, this is where the challenge was. When Elisha told him to strike the ground, for him he was seeing his stick, yet it has now become God's stick. It had become the Lord's arrow of victory. Now, when Elisha is telling him, strike the ground, the king is seeing the ground, the prophet is seeing Syria. Can I say that again? The king and the prophet were seeing things differently. The Bible says God calls things that are not as though they what? As though they are. So King Joash was seeing the ground. So the thing of striking the ground, it, it didn't make a lot of sense to it. You know, a king and the king is there striking the dirt wasn't making sense. But for Elisha, he was seeing Syria. What was that to the king was Syria to Elisha. Ah, striking the ground three times. You know, I had to pick up my book, Fan That Flame. I read it in, I wrote it in 2011 and God told me, pick up the book. I had to go to my bookshelf, pick up the book because I shared this, this message in that book. You know, for for the king to strike the ground three times and stop. Okay? It signifies the times when the believer gives up so soon. It signifies when we don't wait on God long enough. Mm? It signifies when we don't use our God-given authority enough. It signifies our casual prayers. Casual prayers. Oh Lord, bless me today in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, bless this food in Jesus' name. If you are on the Lord, bless me today. Lord, bless my food. Lord, bless my... My friend, you are, you are just striking the ground once. Some of us, I don't know whether we even strike the ground. Are we there? It signifies our casual prayers that are not persistent, are not persevering, and are not specific enough. Okay? It represents our sleepy spiritual warfare that we wage on an enemy that is ever prowling around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You see, sleep, spiritual warfare. Ah, in the name of Jesus, I, I bind that spirit. Yeah, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Just striking the ground. The, the prophet was angry. 
because he told him if you had struck the ground five or six times, you would have struck down Syria until you have destroyed it. Child of God, don't give up in the secret place. You know, you might be in the physical, it might not look whatever. You know, in for example, right now, this is for the pastors and whatever. You are praying and, uh, you know, in the physical, you still have five members or you still are <laughs> like my brother, my son, Darius, and uh, daughter, Brenda. You may be there and you're two <laughs> and the service, the service is like, ah, you're two of you. But, uh, you know, in this in the in the secret place keep shooting for 1000 when i am praying for the upper room churches i don't pray for 200 members i am shooting for 1000 and i shoot every day for 1000 every day i'm shooting for 1000 every day i'm shooting for 1000 branch churches every day because a little one god has told us a little one shall become 1000 and a strong, a small one, a small nation. Today, I added the church without walls on my list. The church without walls, you know, we had said that minimum we want is 120 because they were, they were, you know, uh, uh, 120 in the upper room. But today, I added the upper room church without walls on my list on the shooting of 1,000. I shoot 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. And, you know, God gave me another thing, you know, when we have a service for a, a particular time, I shoot. I also pray for that particular time. That, you know, so if we are praying for, if we have a service for two hours, I will also pray for two hours and shoot for two two hours. I'm shooting. I'm shooting. So every every single moment of that service, I have shot an arrow. Kabos, I have shot an arrow. So I don't. Know. Are you getting what I'm saying? Am I getting what I'm saying? Anyway, <laughs> I am just saying that we must use uh, the, 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 the authority that God has given us in the secret place. Don't give up. Don't give up. Shoot. Sh keep shooting. Keep declaring things in the secret place. Keep, you know, words don't die. Words are... Uh, but, you know, words are spirit. And they are, Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and life. Just keep shooting. Keep shooting. You know, some of the things that I'm shooting, maybe my son Joshua will enjoy them. Maybe another pastor somewhere will enjoy them. You know, the other yesterday I was telling my wife, you know, I was telling him that, uh, telling her that, you know, some people will come here some 10 years today and they'll be saying, you people, why aren't you, why aren't you, uh, why aren't you interested in serving God? Do you know how much of a price we have paid? And they would have paid the price for maybe one year or two years, you know. But you have to shoot for somebody to not struggle with what you're struggling with today. Because I am shooting some pastor in Upper Room Church in Barara 20 years from today, 30 years from today, will not struggle, will be enjoying unlimited breakthroughs and whatever. Because I shot. Because I shot. You must shoot for your children. You must shoot some arrow for your children. Do you know that I pray for my children's marriage? I pray for my children's wedding. I pray for my children. You know, you must shoot. You must, you must, you must keep shooting. There is no way. There is no way I can pray the way I pray. And then when it is time for my, my son's wedding, I'm also having 10, 20 wedding meetings and whatever, you know, calling people, sending them 10 messages a day to, to, to come and give me 20,000 contribution. No, I am shooting. I am shooting so that, you know, when it is time for my child to wed off, my daughter to be given away, I'll just call people for a meeting, one or two meetings to organize how we shall organize the place and we give away the girl. You know, you must shoot. You must shoot for your children's education today. You must shoot the arrow for your children's PhD. You must shoot for your child's PhD and master's. You must shoot. You must shoot. You must shoot. Shoot. Yeah, it happens today. Have I made sense? It was supposed to be a short message about victory in the secret place. Victory in the secret place. You must 
shoot. You must shoot the arrows today. Go in your prayer closet and get some arrows and start shooting. And don't shoot twice. Don't shoot three times. As many times as you shoot is the times is the number of times you're going to defeat is Syria. Yeah, that's what he told him. Actually, when you read, I wrote about it later. Later, that chapter ends with this. Jehoash, son of Joaz, recovered from Ben-Hadad, son of Hazel, the cities which he had taken from Joaz, his father. Three times, Jehoash defeated him and recovered the cities of Israel. Three times. Three times. He, in the secret place, he shot three times. In the, in the physical place, he won three times. Are we getting this? You must shoot. You must shoot. Penna, please mute your mic. You must shoot. Oh, admin, help me. You must shoot. Okay? The reason we organize the prayer and fasting is to give you an opportunity to shoot. Okay? In this week, shoot. Shoot some arrows. Pray for, pray for 200 yards in front. Pray for generations in front. You know, somebody said that that leaders, that, that politicians think about the next election, but leaders think about the next generation. Do you hear that? You must pray with a leader's mindset, not with a politician's mindset. A politician thinks about the next election, but a leader thinks about the next generation. Shoot with a generation in mind. Shoot with the next generation in mind. Shoot with three generations away in mind. Shoot. Shoot. And shoot. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to listen to this brief message. Lord, I pray that this brief message resonates in someone's life for the rest of their life. I pray that somebody who has listened to this, every time they are in the closet, they shall remember to shoot. Every time they are in the closet, they shall remember to exercise their God-given authority in the mighty name of Jesus. That the parents who are here, every time they are in the closet, they shall shoot for their children. The spouses who are here, Every time they are here, they shall shoot for their spouses. Ah, uh, The pastors who are here, every time they are in the closet, they shall shoot for their for their flock. They shall shoot for their churches in the mighty name of Jesus. That this word shall resonate in our lives for the rest of our lives. That we shall not just be hearers of it, but we shall be practicers of this word. Make us shooters. Make us super shooters in the spiritual realm in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we glorify you. Be exalted in Jesus' glorious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And Father, I pray for those who are going to give. I know that giving is another way of shooting. As we give through our, as we shoot through our giving, I declare we are blessed. I declare we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. I declare you shall supply all our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you and thank you for coming for this lunch hour. Uh, the Lord surely bless you.